Welcome to a demo on how to create wild maps on the Wild Knowledge Portal. First of all, we're going to click on the uh, wild map icon and then uh, rather than choosing my maps, we're going to be looking at the uh, create option. And first things first, we need to give the, the map a, a title. So in this instance, this is going to be called the, the Oxford Castle. We're going to create a, uh, a trail around the, the castle. I already have some uh, text information describing the uh, the actual trail and the castle itself pre-written just to save some time here. So we just paste that in. Uh, the next side uh, of this uh, map is to actually create a little icon. So just use a very simple uh, image to represent the map uh, when it's displayed on the phone. And we add that. And then the third element is to create the, the map itself. Now we are thinking of incorporating OpenStreetMaps into the Wild Knowledge Portal, but for the time being you need to visit the OpenStreetMap website and uh, in this instance I'm going to be looking for Oxford, type that in and then zoom to the correct area. Just make sure that you get it to the right resolution and what we're going to do, we're happy with that, is hit the export function at the top of the, field, uh, the uh, screen here. Uh, I usually save it as a as a JPEG, uh, just to, to reduce size, so I change the format from PNG to JPEG uh, and then export that and that will download uh, a JPEG of the map to, to my site, uh, to my desktop rather. Um, and then I could go back to the Wild Knowledge site and choose that map. I have one in my uh, folder here uh, and basically upload that to the website. As I say, we are thinking of integrating it, but the, the service from OpenStreetMap can be a bit flaky. Uh, the reason we offline a map um, is that uh, services like Google Maps are not available um, offline. Finally, I'm just going to quickly add some audio in here, some trumpets to, to welcome the user to the trail, give it a bit of uh, fun. And there is a, a mini form uh, which is attached to this map, which enables the user to also record information as they move around. Um, so it's a two-way process. Uh, we're happy with that. We've saved our information. So what we're going to do next is uh, georeference uh, the map so that uh, each part of the uh, map has a latitude and a longitude. So we click on the georeferencing tool. I'm going to type um, Oxford here. Let's clear those results out the way and zoom in and what we have to do uh, is find two common points um, in each of these maps. So here's our uploaded OpenStreetMap on the left, here's Google Maps on the right and uh, we're going to move in uh, to the necessary zoom level. Sometimes it's easier to use satellite imagery, uh, for example we, I'm looking for that mound there, very easy to see and that is the mound on the left there. So what I'm looking for are two common places, um, ideally um, diagonally opposite from one another just to uh, allow the maps to work their magic and I'm going to click on uh, the corner of the road there and drag the icon to a similar position over there and now if I need to find something down in the bottom right hand corner which uh, is common to, to both of them so the corner of that road uh, looks like a good place there so I'm just going to drag um, this over here uh, yeah, I can see it just there on the bottom right hand corner click on there and then drag the blue icon to the same point. Now if I've got it right, the map appears and I can uh, zoom out or zoom in and hide the overlay to make sure I've got a good fit and that looks spot on. So if you just drag that down, uh, you can see there's a top left and bottom right latitude and longitude and now we can save it. So we have a georeference map. As I say, uh, if OpenStreetMap was integrated, you wouldn't have to georeference the map. but um, is something we're looking into. So now I'm going to add my designated interest point or DIP. You can choose lots of different icons. I'm going to choose a numerical one uh, in orange here and I'm going to put that on the location of the castle itself. So this is all about uh, individual interest points now. So I'm going to talk about one of the buildings uh, which is the, the tower. And again I've uh, created some information about St George's Tower just to save some time. Uh, I'm going to copy that and paste that within my uh, notes about the designated interest point. I have a position there you see um, and what I'm going to do is just I'm just going to save that as I'm working along for good practice so save and continue editing and then you'll see we've got three green tabs along here media, questions and forms. So the media is where we attach our videos, audio clips and uh, also images. 
I'm just going to add a few images uh, about the castle to give uh, the user some information about that. And so the first image is about the castle, so I'll call that the castle. The second image, um, for those who've been to Oxford Castle, it's situated right next to a, a, a mound. So I'm just going to add that on. There we go, and I shall call that the mound. And that, that will suffice for, for media for the purposes of this. But as you can see, it's very easy to add any type of uh, media. Um, also, you can link to web pages. I didn't mention that. And then uh, I'm going to do a little quiz. So under question, I'm going to ask uh, a question here. Uh, and again, go back to my bit of text. When did work on the castle begin? What year did uh, uh, work on the castle begin? Now, you could hide the uh, answer in text. You could uh, require the user to go around the site and find information on site. Uh, it's up to you how you do that. So I'm just typing those in. One more, it won't make it too difficult. Um, and then what you have to do is tick the correct answer. Um, oops, uh, just fix that. Tick the correct answer and save that. Um, if I wanted to, I could also add a recording form to that particular uh, dip, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to in this incident. Incidents, as, as you will remember, there is a mini form they can gather information with as they walk around the site. Um, so we're pretty much done there. We've got all our uh, bits of information. I'd obviously create a few more points if I was creating a full on trail. Registered users can make free interest points. Subscribers are unlimited. But we've got our, our uh, trail and we're going to go and use that in the field now. So we need to deploy that to the device by ticking the publish. And we're ready to roll. And we can now deploy that to the device. OK, so here we have the uh, device with uh, the wild map app there and we have the Oxford Castle intro audio. I'm going to download that content to the device and then open it. And this will display the uh, map with the point of interest on it. So here we go. Um, we have a simple navigation uh, panel on the left where you can zoom and uh, pan and so forth. And you simply click on your point of interest uh, and this displays the, the photos uh, we uploaded. Also the uh, text information about the tower itself in this case and the quiz question uh, in which year the castle was uh, built. And it will tell you whether you're right or wrong. So now we're out in the field actually using the, the app uh, at the castle itself and uh, endeavouring to answer those questions and, and find out a little more about the castle uh, and its constituent parts. Remember with WildMap you can also add your own information. Um, it is a two-way process. Registered users do have a mini form where they can geotag information and uh, write small comments uh, about what they're looking at. Uh, this data is then uploaded to the Wild Knowledge Portal and if we go back to that and then click on the Wild Map area um, Again, let's have a look at our My Maps rather than the Create tool. And we've only got one map in this account. And we could look at that map or we can have a look at the data which was uploaded. Um, as with other applications, it comes in a tabular form and we've got one record uploaded here with comments about the previous use of the building. And that can be uh, visualized as a map as well. So you can see we have the, the orange dot, which was the original point of interest, the designated interest point, and then the information which was filled in by the, the visitor there. So uh, you can also uh, toggle between satellite imagery and uh, Google Maps as well as using the wild map as an interface. So import, an important feature of wild map being the fact that it is a two-way process and that is wild map, how to create, mobilize and visualize.